My name is Leanne Cooper. This week is Inventor Studio and we're on part three. Today we're going to look at the work of Louise Nevelson, who is a American sculptor that used found objects and wooden assemblages. So for this project, it's going to be really fun because when Louise put together her assemblages, she found stuff on the side of the road and um, she would bring in wooden corbels and pieces of junk wood that people would just throw away. If you ever look at any of her sculptures, you can actually see like where maybe some of the pieces of boards were broke and she just kind of left that feathered edge there. Now, if you don't have a whole bunch of wood, that's okay because she used found objects. So what we're gonna use is just stuff that we might have laying around the house. So our supplies for today's project are kind of fun because hopefully you won't have to buy anything. Our back piece, which is what we're gonna attach all of our parts to, is just a piece of cardboard off of a cereal box. And then I also have some other pieces of cardboard from various boxes. Um, this was inside of my husband's ball cap. I didn't use it in mine, but I thought it would be cool for somebody's. Um, there's some caps off of bottles and jugs. We've got plastic utensils, pop tops, buttons, basically anything that you have laying around that nobody's going to use for something else. And then here's some balsa wood that if you have this, you don't have to go out and buy it, but if you have it, it'd be fun to add it into your project because most of Louise's work was wood assemblages. We're just taking it a little bit further and we're gonna use some things that we have around the house. Um, I didn't have balsa wood at home, so when I show you my finished piece, I went outside and got some sticks out of my backyard and I really liked how they worked out. Now, when you're attaching these things to the cardboard, if you're going to use some other thin cardboard on here, you can just use white glue. But for heavier things, especially like the shell, you'll probably want to use a hot glue gun. And then when we get finished, we want to make the whole thing one color. And the reason we want to do that is, is just in honor of Louise's work, she always painted her things monochromatic. That means one color. And you may wonder, why did she do this? She did it to emphasize the light and the shadows. And once you get your piece completed and then painted, I think that you will be able to see what the difference is. In fact, I would even suggest possibly once you get through assembling it, maybe take a photograph. And then when you get through, take another photograph and you can compare the difference in the light and the shadows. After you've gotten all of your found objects together, go ahead and take your piece that'll be your background piece and start thinking about your composition. I think that the best way to do that is to kind of look at the objects that you have found and see how they work together. And we can just start by placing them on your background. We're gonna just arrange things and move them around before we ever glue anything. That way, we don't have to worry about trying to pull it back off or messing it up. So you just take your objects and just play with them on your background. I'm going to get these right here. With your balsa wood, you can just it a little bit and you should be able to snap it. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Just whatever you like best, whatever you think looks good because this is your piece of artwork. <laughs> 
take these little cutouts and the little tabs that are already on boxes and I kind of like to use those as an element. I'm just going to scoot this over a little bit. You can take these pieces and you can bend your little tab. That could be something that you could glue to the back and make some shapes here. Sure about that little piece. Let's see here. Maybe put it there. So you can just continue with however many little objects and pieces of paper you have. Just rearrange it as much as you need to until you find a spot that you like. And then you can start gluing down. And once you decide you're going to glue down, things like this, you can use your white glue. Oops. You can even use white glue on the balsa wood, but I would use the hot glue gun for the cutlery, the shell, and the caps. It'd just be a better chance of them staying on there. So here's my piece that I have finished and glued. Um, you can see here, I didn't have balsa wood, so like I said earlier, I went outside and found some sticks. I glued those on with the hot glue gun. Here is just a little tab piece off of the cereal box that this part came from. Um, here is a little, one of those little bread tab things. I thought that kind of looked cool. And then just two plastic caps, and there's another plastic cap. Piece of cutlery. And then this was a um, little piece that was inside something that I bought and it was already folded like that. So instead of gluing it straight up, I just kind of let it go to an angle because I wanted everybody to kind of look at these really cool branches. And then this little piece was a tab and I just cut little fingers on it and then glued it to there. Now, as you can see, I used my spray paint that I had out in the garage, but I could have easily just used paint with a brush, just regular acrylic paint. But I wanna show you something. I didn't clean this off beforehand because I wanted you to see, you know how hot glue leaves those little strings. One thing about painting it, well, if you didn't get them off, you'll be able to see them after you've painted it if you're looking really good, which I look. So there's one right here and it's really long and I can't get it off, but <laughs> one good thing about painting it is you can pick off any of that kind of stuff afterwards. And then you have a piece that's monochromatic. And if you take a picture of your before and after, I think it would be really interesting to see as you pay attention to your painted one and look for the light and the shadows and just see how your different objects play on this back surface. I hope you enjoyed it. So today in part three of Inventor Studio, we talked about Louise Nevelson and how she made huge sculptures out of found wooden objects. We talked about how she painted her sculptures monochromatic, and that is in just one color. And she did that to emphasize the light and the shadows so that you would be drawn to that more than the actual images. 